Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I'm going to be talking all about the Oculus Quest and I'm going to be giving you all the information you need to know about this upcoming headset from Oculus. I'm going to be talking about my hands-on experience with this device from Oculus Connect, all the information I could find about the specs so far, when I think it's going to be released and when the pre-orders will likely open, how it compares to the Oculus Rift, who I think it's for, and then answering some reoccurring questions I keep seeing about this headset. I'll put timestamps to everything in in the description down below. Of course, when the Oculus Quest launches, I'll be covering this device in detail, including all the games and guides that you'll need to get the most out of this headset. So if you're not subscribed to this channel already, do so now so you don't miss out on any of my future Oculus Quest content. So without further ado, let's dive straight into the details that you guys and girls want to know about this device. First up, I just want to quickly cover the basics. As I know for many people out there interested in the Oculus Quest, this will be their first VR headset. If you're a newcomer, I want to welcome you to VR and I'm excited for you. Trying it out for the first time is going to be a mind-blowing experience. The Oculus Quest is a VR headset designed for gamers. Think of it as a VR console. It's completely wireless, you don't need a PC to power it, and your phone doesn't have to slot into it like the old Gear VR. It's a standalone device with all the processing power being done in the headset itself. It's a six degrees of freedom headset, so just like the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, and Windows MR headsets, you can freely move around a virtual environment if you have the physical space for it in your play area. The Quest has another important feature, which is full 6 degrees of freedom hand presence in VR using the Oculus Touch controllers. This is a first for a standalone VR headset. We've been told the price tag for the Quest is going to be $399 US dollars, and the headset will feature 64 gigabytes of internal storage for your movies, applications and games. My guess is that nearer to launch we'll see a higher priced model featuring more internal storage for those that feel that 64GB isn't enough. During Oculus Connect 5 we were told the Quest will launch in Spring 2019. This will conveniently coincide with Facebook F8 which is being held in California. This yearly event is going to take place between the 30th of April and the 1st of May. It's likely during this event that the pre-orders will open for the Quest, just like last year when Oculus opened up pre-orders for Oculus Go during F8 2018. The Oculus Quest is touted to launch with over 50 titles, and I've listed the ones we know about so far in a separate video, which I'll link to during the end screen of this video. So let's jump into the specs and what we know so far, starting with the audio. The headset will feature built-in spatial 360 audio which runs through the headset straps to an opening just near your ears like it does with the Oculus Go. There's not one but two 3.5mm headphone jacks on each side of the headset. Oculus teased that these are for some future audio accessories or you can plug in your own pair of headphones in either headphone jack. The headset will also have a built-in microphone for in-game chat, which as we know from the Oculus Go, sounds great. Oculus state the Quest will have the best optics of all the Oculus headsets released so far. It will have the same Fresnel lenses that we've seen on Oculus Go, however it will have a manually adjustable IPD slider to accommodate a wide variety of people's pupil distances. This is key for ensuring maximum comfort whilst in virtual reality. In terms of display, it will sport two 1600 by 1440 pixels per eye OLED panels at around 100 degrees field of view and will run at a refresh rate of 72 Hz. This is a higher resolution than both the Oculus Go and Oculus Rift. To give you some details of those two headsets to compare, the Oculus Go has a single panel LCD display which gives you around 1280 by 1440 pixels per eye and runs at 60Hz, boosting to 72Hz in some applications. The Oculus Rift has two 1080 by 1200 pixels per eye OLED panels at a refresh rate of 90Hz. Just like the Oculus Go, the Oculus Quest will benefit from fixed foveated rendering and chromatic aberration correction to ensure performance and clarity in the headset. 
The Quest will also have space to accommodate people wearing glasses, with a spacer included in the box. Although I'm sure Lens Labs and Widmo VR will come up with nice clip-in prescription lenses, which I would totally recommend. This is great for preventing any scratches from your lenses on your glasses rubbing against the lenses of the headset. Running all the processing power at the heart of the Quest will be a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. I know many were disappointed that the headset didn't sport the new Snapdragon 845, however it would have meant the price of the device would have increased way beyond $399. US from my hands-on experience with the device at Oculus Connect 5, games ran perfectly smoothly on it, and it felt like a Rift comparable experience. Although it's of course running less graphical horsepower in games than the Rift, but it's hard to notice this in games that were well optimised for the headset, such as Superhot, Dead and Buried, and Face Your Fears. Although we don't know for sure, the Oculus Quest is likely going to have around 3 hour battery life. However, there will likely be solutions to power the headset from a battery pack whilst in use. We know that the supplied USB cable that comes with the headset has a right angle connector, in which the cable runs directly down. This could connect to a battery pack connected to your waist for example, but of course we'll have to wait for official details on this. Unlike the Oculus Go, which uses the front plate as a heatsink, the Quest will have an active cooling fan built inside the headset. And I'm really happy to hear this, as it will be unlikely that we'll have any overheating issues like we've seen on the Go in intensive social experiences like Oculus Rooms and Big Screen. For charging the headset and data transfer, Oculus have opted for USB-C, which is on the side of the headset. Just like on Oculus Go, you'll be able to transfer your own content including movies and pictures to watch alone or share with your friends and family. It's highly unlikely that this USB-C connection will be used for virtual link to connect to your PC. John Carmack from Oculus confirmed this himself via Twitter, so it's very unlikely we'll be able to connect this to a PC to play Steam VR content. However, with it being an Android device and seeing what the community has done with the Oculus Go, it's possible you'll be able to stream PC VR content to your headset over Wi-Fi, although getting the tracking data from the controllers back over to your PC might be a bit of a stumbling block. Just like Windows Mixed Reality VR headsets, the Oculus Quest won't require any external tracking solutions. It uses its own inside-out tracking system called Oculus Insight. This uses four ultra-wide cameras on the corners of the headset for tracking and the Guardian system. When you set up your play space, the room you're in is scanned and the Quest will store that data. You can do this in a number of different rooms and when you return, the system will remember the layout of the room. However, you'll still need to set a boundary of your safe play space manually as the Guardian system won't be able to detect your cat or child if it decides to run into you during your gameplay. I'd recommend setting out a rug or using a product like a proxy mat so you can feel the texture underneath your feet and you'll know when you reach the limits of your play area. I've seen far too many TVs and ceiling fans destroyed by VR users, so please, please bear this in mind. The Quest can easily achieve room scale tracking and beyond, and we know this from the arena scale demo they were showing at OC5, which had an arena of over 4,000 square feet. It's unlikely though that we'll see this on launch, and it seemed to be just a bit of a tech demo of Oculus's vision of the future of location-based VR experiences. As we saw during our hands-on at Oculus Connect 5, the Quest is capable of a pass-through mixed reality mode, giving you an outline of the world around you. Many described it as having a view like in that AHA music video. It's unknown if this will be a feature on launch though. The headset itself is made of a sturdy plastic, with a material wrapped around the body. This opens up the headset to some customization options, and we saw this during the Dead and Buried Arena demo, where the two separate teams had different coloured headsets. In terms of comfort, it has a rigid head strap, just like the Oculus Rift, and feels similar in weight, if not just a little bit heavier. All you'll need to do to set up the Quest is use a smartphone like an Android or iOS device using the Oculus app. The Oculus app is also great for managing friends and looking through the latest available applications and games. You'll also be able to stream what's being seen inside the headset to the app so you can share it with friends and family. Finally, let's move on to the controllers. 
They feel almost identical to the touch controllers for Rift, although slightly smaller, although this wasn't a problem for my baby-sized hands. Visually, the main difference is the inverted ring, which contains the discrete infrared tracking. Both controllers have rumble haptic feedback and thumbsticks, which is a huge plus in my mind. So one question that I keep seeing popping up is how the Oculus Quest compares to the Oculus Rift. Well, the two games that I've played on both systems, Super Hot and Dead and Buried, they felt and looked just like they did on the Rift. Obviously, there will be a visual downgrade from playing games on a $1,000 PC to then using the Oculus Quest, but the experience is surprisingly close, and when you're playing a game on Quest, I wasn't thinking about the resolution, the pixel density, or the screen door effect. I was just immersed in the game. Of course, not all games from Rift will be available on Quest. Don't expect titles like the newly announced Asgard's Wrath, Stormland, or Lone Echo to be on Quest. However, games like Rec Room, Job Simulator, Big Screen, and Beat Saber are entirely possible. Developers will have to be more efficient with textures and lighting effects, but for the most part, as shown here, it's visually very similar. One big plus of the Quest over Rift is it being completely untethered. It makes a huge difference. I've said this before about wireless VR solutions, it's very liberating. Although sadly, I've ditched both wireless solutions for Rift and Vive due to latency in recording and streaming content. For an everyday user, I would still totally recommend them. I've heard a lot of Rift owners being negative towards the Quest, and all I'd say is, just try it when it comes out and I think you'll be surprised. But will it replace your Rift and $1000 PC? No, of course not. But I'm sure Oculus has something in the pipeline for us PC fans in the future, so don't worry and don't think that Oculus has ditched the PC user base. So finally, who is the Oculus Quest for? Well, we know Oculus has a goal to get 1 billion people into VR, and they need 10 million people on each platform to make this a sustainable and profitable ecosystem for developers. This headset is for gamers and VR newcomers that don't have access to powerful PC hardware and have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for a device like this to come along. The awareness of VR is at an all-time high, with people excited about the technology, but many, including some of my close friends, just can't justify spending $1,000 on a PC setup. The Quest changes that, and rightly so, many people are excited about it. And although Oculus are currently focusing on standalone and mobile devices, this doesn't mean that Oculus is forgetting PC players. Just remember that the company is still heavily investing in PC VR content, and with the exposure of the Quest when it launches, this will likely increase the interest in PC VR setups for people who want the best possible experience. The Oculus Quest will be the final piece in the puzzle and will complete the first generation of Oculus products. I wouldn't be surprised at Oculus Connect 2019, we'll see more news about the Rift 2.0. Okay, so there we have it guys and girls. That's everything you need to know about the Oculus Quest. Now if you've got any questions, put them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Having used VR devices almost daily now for over two years, I'm really, really excited about this device. The one thing I'm really looking forward to the most is being able to take this headset on the go with me and show friends and family the true magic of VR. Having that full room scale, six degrees of freedom experience on the go is just going to be simply awesome. Will it be the holy grail of VR and will it be the tipping point for mainstream VR adoption? Well, only time will tell. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like this video, please leave a like, make sure you're subscribed for all my future Oculus Quest content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.